Meet a boy is a backer, and I don't speak a word of Italian, but I am Italian. So today we are making spaghetti carbonara, higher quality version. If we're able to remove the negatives and improve the positives, you know, get rid of those agrochemical concerns and increase the nutritional content of the ingredients we're using, it turns something that people perceive as indulgent, unhealthy into something that you actually feel pretty good eating and it's certainly good for you. So let's go over those ingredients. Unfortunately, as usual, we are sponsored by Whole Foods and until Frankie Boy gets his own farm, that's how it's looking. But we do have some Parmigiano Reggiano from Frankie's syringe meat, high quality raw cow's milk cheese. That is the classic one to use in carbonara. You could use half Parmesan, half Pecorino, a mix of both. You could use only Pecorino. Either is what they use in Italy. Cheese is really the main source of nutrition here. It's incredibly high in fat, protein, small amount of carbohydrates, excellent source of B vitamins, very concentrated source of minerals, very calorically dense, one of the healthiest and most approachable foods you can include in your diet. We're not putting too much in here, so it's not that significant. Uh, we also have eggs, which are high in B vitamins, very balanced, excellent. The only problem is, you know, regardless of what quality eggs you get, there's usually an omega-6 concern because the chickens are fed corn and soy. And we, we can't really alleviate that. At least you're getting some omega-3, some B vitamins, cholesterol, some minerals. The bacon, I'm honestly not too happy about because this is definitely corn and soy fed. At least it's organic. You, know, you could buy some beef belly, some Iberico belly, some wild boar belly on Frankie's Range Meat. Make a much better version yourself. We actually made bacon some months back. Classically, you would use guanciale, pork cheek, or pancetta, but you know I don't have access to that, let alone high quality versions. Maybe this has some protein, some B vitamins in it, but not quality, not significant. The pasta is what makes a huge difference. You know, when you go really high quality on the pasta, the wheat isn't grown with all these chemicals, glyphosate, pesticides, which are actually what's causing the problem as opposed to the gluten in them. Uh, this is a durum wheat semolina. This is pretty pricey, but you, know, you can get some cheaper, more affordable organic pastas at, at most supermarkets as well. We're gonna use two whole eggs, one egg yolk, maybe two to three tablespoons of Parmesan in the pasta and grating on top. I'm just gonna cook all of this bacon, dice it up, and maybe we'll put half of it in the pasta. And we're gonna do 200 grams of this. And in regards to the pasta type, you want a larger spaghetti noodle. Salt and pepper, we have a land salt, organic mixed peppercorns, this is just what I have. We will have some salt available next week on Frankie's Syringe Meat, so keep an eye out for that. And we did put some glass bottled mineral water in our pot to boil the pasta because I don't trust the tap water it makes me sick in New York when I drink it, especially even when it's filtered. So this is 500 grams, which is a bit over a pound. We're gonna use half of this bag. The reason I'm using a pan for this pasta instead of a pot is because of the glass bottled mineral water. You know, to fill up a pot with that stuff would be even more expensive. So we're going something shallow here. It works just as well. We're gonna put maybe a tablespoon of salt in there and then add our pasta. And definitely keep this moving for the first few minutes so it does not stick together. Put the bacon in a pot on a medium high heat. And I'm using a pot because this is gonna be the finishing vessel for our pasta. Now you might see some Italians put olive oil in here, but it's not necessary because the bacon is gonna render. I honestly don't like the flavor of olive oil in general, let alone heated olive oil. So if you do wanna add some, we can do it after the pasta is finished. While the bacon is sauteing and the pasta is boiling, we're going to prepare the sauce. Very simple. Two eggs, and then we're gonna take one egg yolk. You could just do two eggs, but that makes it a little creamier. So we'll take our Parmigiano. And normally I go a little crazy here and I always overdo the cheese, but you really don't want more than about two tablespoons. I'm using a microplane, very quick, very easy to use and clean up. And we're gonna grate more cheese on the end afterwards, so don't worry about going under. Okay, that looks about right. Fresh cracked black pepper. The bacon's really salty, the pasta water's salted, so I don't wanna add salt here, just be a little careful. I'll just whisk this up. And that's gonna be our sauce. So the pasta needs a few more minutes. The bacon was burning a little bit on the bottom, but all you have to do is put some water in there, cool it down, and then you can kind of scrape those brown bits off the bottom, and the water will just evaporate, 
render out the fat of the bacon and you'll be fine. Two reasons we're gonna strain off the bacon. One, it's not that high quality, so the fat is higher in omega-6, so it's going to be healthier if we remove that fat. Two, I don't like bacon grease carbonara. That's not what I want. It, you know, it's much cleaner if you remove the bacon fat. I mean, that's probably a little too much bacon for this amount of pasta, but I don't have anything else to use it with, so we'll just go with it. So we're straining the pasta. I'm gonna keep about three to four tablespoons of pasta water just in case we need to thicken up the sauce. So the bacon's been off the heat for about two minutes to cool off a little bit. I'm just trying to get some of that bacon grease on the pasta so it doesn't stick together as it cools off. And now we want to let this sit for, you know, three, four, five minutes before we put the eggs in just so they don't scramble really quickly. This isn't that necessary. You know, I've, I've done it without waiting, but I'm just going to play it safe today. Our pasta is still a little hot, which is what we want. Now we're going to put in the two eggs and one yolk with the cheese. I'm just going to add a little bit of the pasta water. Now, if you want to grate more Parmesan, you can do it now, or you could do it like on top after you plate it for a nicer presentation. Jeannie, you want to taste some pasta? That was, why did I even ask? Seriously, how come you even look better than I do? That's not fair. Unfortunately, my mother translates her horrible sense of hairstyle to my daughter. Or, oh, let me redo that. <laughs> Unfortunately, my mother's terrible. All right, let's be nice. You try to insult my hair and I will backhand you. Hi, everybody. As you can see, I decided to stop by and help my brother with his video today. And I got a haircut. Guess which one of us is the better looking triplet? He is. All right, Gina, so. And I'm going to try some pasta today. Oh, God, greasy, greasy, greasy. And I'm putting it. Mmm. Mmm. Really good pasta. Well, Gina has the same reaction to everything, but I haven't met one person that doesn't like carbonara. So if your family likes this or, you know, if you're looking to cook for someone for a date, this is a great dish to do. You can't really mess it up. It's only a few ingredients mm -hmm. and the prep isn't that difficult. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, you can go to frankiesrangemeat.com if you want to get the Parmigiano Reggiano. We also have Pecorino Romano. Mm -hmm. You can do both. Definitely leave a comment down below. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. Mm -hmm. And make sure to click that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Bye, everybody. And I'll see you for tomorrow's video. Bye. This is really good pasta.